Welcome to Business Basics Friday. Safi Russell, Messier Consulting, Inc. Here on Business Basics Friday, our goal is to provide value to small business owners every Friday at 12 Eastern. And uh, so we're here streaming on Facebook Live and Clubhouse. Welcome to everyone who's here. And I'm going to go ahead and introduce our guest speaker, uh, Tyrone Taylor, who's going to cover the topic of uh, taxes that new business owners need to know about. So Tyrone, the floor is yours. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Zephi. Um, yes, my name is uh, Tyrone Taylor. I'm an enrolled agent um, and I've uh, been in the tax industry for going on about 15 years now. Um, I also uh, do, uh, I, I specialize in, in tax representation, which if you're not familiar with that is, is uh, individuals or business, small businesses that have tax issues. I represent them, try to fix those issues. Uh, I also do small business consulting. Um, I also have a master's in business administration. So that kind of assists me in, in uh, helping small businesses uh, as far as helping them get started and, and, and hopefully uh, running them correctly. Um, as a, I'm based out of Nashville. Um, so if uh, you ever have any questions, uh, I work nationwide as well. I have a virtual, uh, virtual uh, practice as well. Um, Today's topic, what I wanted to address is uh, one of the things that I find in uh, doing the work that I do as far as tax representation is a lot of small businesses run into issues because as far as taxes are concerned, because they don't realize all the different types of taxes that small businesses may or may not have to pay. There are a lot of people just used to filing a, a, a tax return with uh, but either on an individual level with either uh, the federal government or with the IRS, uh, excuse me, the IRS or with their state uh, revenue offices, and that's that. That's all they're used to doing. However, small businesses usually uh, have a lot more as far as different types of taxes that they have to pay. So today, what I'm, I'm going to be presenting to you all is an overview of some of the types of taxes that you may, as a small business owner, have to uh, deal with and you should be aware of. Okay, so give me a second. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Uh, oh, Safi, I think we run into an issue. It won't allow me to share my screen. Let's see here. Yeah, I can't share my screen, Safi. I don't know if you hear, hear me or not. Yeah, I fixed it. Sorry about that. It should be good now. Oh, okay. All right. No problem. There we go. All right. Okay, here we go. Okay, so um, as I said, our presentation today, um, name of my company that I also uh, work with, uh, small biz, or excuse me, um, tax professionals uh, that want to know about what I what I know about, which is tax representation in small business uh, taxes, is uh, called Pro Tax Education. So if you're a tax professional and you want to learn about uh, tax representation. That's what I do with this company. So today's presentation is, uh, as I stated earlier, taxes uh, new businesses need to know about. Um, there are several different types of taxes. Um, and this is the beginning listings. I'm gonna go over all of these individual taxes. The first one is income tax. Most of us are familiar with income tax. You're basically taxed on uh, your income. Um, and individuals uh, who aren't small businesses, they understand that concept. But there are several different other types of taxes. Uh, franchise taxes, uh, actually, actually be franchise and excise taxes, and I'll go over that. Uh, sometimes you have a business tax. It could be a local or, uh, or county city-based tax. Uh, you've got payroll taxes, property tax. Some of us are familiar with property taxes. You have to pay property tax in your home if you own one personal property tax, sales tax, uh, liquor taxes, and uh, professional privilege tax. Now, this is a large overview of the different types of taxes that you or your, your small business may be liable for. However, this is not completely comprehensive. Um, you should definitely check with your local um, tax professional or uh, local tax board to find out what other types of taxes uh, your small business may be liable for. So the first uh, one we're gonna go over real quick is income tax. Um, just about everyone knows what an income tax is. 
basically here in the United States, you're going to face two different types of tax, either a federal income tax or a state income tax. Um, it's, it's usually filed on an annual basis, and it is based upon generally your net income, which is not your revenue, not the amount of money that your business pulled in, but the, the amount of income after your revenue and your expenses. Um, several, most states have this type of tax. So you definitely need to be aware of uh, federal income and, and state income taxes. Next type of tax, um, different states, um, state I'm in, we charge what's called a franchise tax. Now, franchise taxes do not apply to all businesses. They all, and here in my state, and in many other states, they apply to corporations, partnerships, and limited liability companies. Um, and they're generally based upon the gross income of a business. So um, if you have a corporation or a partnership or an LLC, you are probably, and your company made money, you're probably gonna be liable for a franchise state tax. Uh, I've, I've run into clients that have had corporations and LLCs for quite a while, and they weren't aware of this particular tax. So it's important that you check with your, like I said, your local uh, tax professional or local uh, uh, tax, um, uh, excuse me, your local tax uh, state uh, entity to find out if this is something that your company be reliable for. The next type of tax is something I also mentioned is an excise tax. And that also applies to uh, corporations, partnerships, and LLCs. That particular tax is based on the goods and services that are sold. So it's the total amount or that revenue that I spoke of earlier that this particular tax will be based upon. It can also be based upon several other things like uh, net income, um, or, or if you've rented property, I mean, there's a, there's a large list of things that the government can tax you on. And so those are a couple of things that will fall under an excise tax. Next type of tax is a business tax. And I mentioned that business taxes generally are charged by cities and counties, and they're based upon the total revenue that your small business has, uh, has earned over uh, usually an annual uh, period. Um, this usually is tied into you having a business license. So uh, a lot of times uh, when you go to obtain a business license, if you haven't paid this tax, you will not receive your business license. Uh, payroll tax. Now, many of you are uh, who have employees or or thinking about having employees are familiar with this particular tax. Uh, this tax is based upon the wages that are paid to your employees. And it consists prim uh, primarily of two different types of tax, FICO taxes and social security taxes. FICO is, uh, this is FICO, FICO should be FICA, excuse me. Um, FICA is the tax that is paid to support uh, Medicare. And Social Security, we all are familiar with Social Security. I shouldn't have to explain that. Um, businesses, uh, when you have a small business, you are liable for 50% of these taxes and your employ employee, 50%, um, they pay 50% out of their paycheck. Um, it is, uh, it, it, you also are, um, have to withhold income tax from your employee's paycheck. Uh, there's some other taxes that are, are involved with this. Uh, there's, an, a, there's both state and federal unemployment tax that also are considered payroll taxes. Um, no, I didn't, I'm not gonna go too deeply into this. Once again, this is an overview. So any of the things I'm speaking of, you should talk to a local tax professional to discuss what other types of taxes, especially payroll taxes, that your business may be liable for. Now, there's these taxes are fairly special as far as the IRS and state are concerned because they are considered trust fund taxes, which means basically 
you are holding other people's money, in this case, your employees that are supposed to be paid up front, uh, usually on a biweekly basis to the IRS and the state. Um, it's a very important tax to pay one is because if you don't pay it, even if you have a corporation or a partnership or a limited li a liability company, if you don't pay it, you personally can be liable for these taxes, even though the corporation was supposed to pay for it. So this is like, and it's a very high uh, uh, late fee, late filing fee, et cetera, for these particular taxes. So it's very, very important that you pay these taxes and pay them on time if you can. If you can't pay them, file at, at the least. A property tax. Um, some counties will require an annual tax to be paid based upon the value of the property that's owned by a business entity. Um, so they'll they'll do they'll have you fill out a form to state what the value of your property is, and then you send it in and. Or excuse me, no. In this particular tax, they determine the value of your property. They'll do an assessment. Um, the the county assessor will come and check your the, your property or assign it a value, and you are taxed upon uh, that based upon that the value of that property. Next type of tax is something called a personal property tax. A lot of small businesses aren't aware of this tax, and it may apply to your business. It's basically the, uh, the county or the city uh, stating that you are supposed to be taxed on the value of your assets within the business. So um, that could be equipment, real estate, uh, and I'm talking about things like office computers, um, anything of, that you use uh, of value for your, your business is technically supposed to be taxed and paid uh, as a personal property tax. Sales tax. Now, sales tax is based upon the sale of goods and services in a specific geographic area. It's not based on where the business is, but based on where the sale actually occurred. So um, businesses are responsible for the collection and paying of the sales tax um, in other geographical areas outside their business location. So, um, this also is a very important tax to pay. Um, it's probably number two behind payroll taxes. However, this particular tax is based upon generally the state and a county that you uh, and uh, you, you, you know, the business is occurring. And if you do not collect this tax, you're still liable for it. Uh, you're, the government can assess an amount that they believe you should have uh, uh, paid. Um, and if you don't pay this tax, you could ultimately be shut down. Um, this tax is generally paid either on a monthly, quarterly, or, or annual basis. And um, it's like I said, it's probably the number one tax um, after income in payroll, or I guess I'd make it number three. In my state, it's, number, it's pretty much uh, number one because we don't have an income tax. So uh, I've seen businesses be shut down because they didn't collect the sales tax from their employ from excuse me from their uh, customers, and therefore the uh, business ended up having to pay it, and they may not have had that money. So once again, if you live in a state that collects sales tax, be aware the liability on this particular tax can increase dramatically, and you need to collect every cent of this tax from your customers. I've had some clients, unfortunately, that did not collect the tax from their customers. And basically, if you're living in a high uh, sales tax state, um, it can eat into your, uh, your profit margin very easily if you're dealing with a, like, for example, in my state, the tax is nine and a half percent. So you're gonna automatically give nine and a half percent to, uh, to whomever, to the, to the state, if you don't pay it or if you don't collect it from your clients. So very important tax. Liquor tax. A liquor tax is a different, is a different type of excise tax. Uh, there are different types. I'm not gonna go into them real deeply because they may not apply to you if you don't sell liquor, if you don't have a restaurant, you don't have to worry about this. But um, 
basically this is a high, a fairly high tax that states charge because going back in history, this was considered a sin tax. So, it, you know, if you're drinking, you're sinning. So this, the, the tax on these are, are fairly high. Um, there's taxes on beer, there's taxes on liquor, there's taxes on liquor by the drink. So if you sell one drink, you're supposed to technically collect a specific type of tax for that one drink. Okay. Professional privilege taxes. Now, these particular taxes are based upon a specific profession that you're in. Uh, some states have these, some states do not. Um, I know in my state, we used to have a larger number of these particular uh, taxes, but they've kind of fallen to the wayside. And I think we only have, I think at one point we had like 15 types of, of professional uh, taxes, um, but I think we're down to four or something like that. Um, generally, they're, they're applied towards um, professions like being an attorney or a CPA or a dentist or a doctor. Um, and, and, and they're tied and in, also tied into your licensing as, as far as uh, those professions are concerned. So um, if you have those types of businesses, that also is another type of tax you should be aware of. So that's the, that's the conclusion of my presentation. As I stated in the beginning, there are other types of, of taxes that you may be liable for as a small business person, but this is a general overview so you can know that the, at least the main types of taxes that uh, small businesses, small business owners are, are, are liable for. Um, so when you start a business or if you're in business, you can check once again with your local tax professional to make sure that all your bases are crossed. You don't want to have to end up calling my company, National Tax Relief, for assistance because you've fallen behind on the tax that you were supposed to pay. So if you, uh, if you have any questions, Asafi, at this point, or if, um, if anyone wants to uh, ask any questions, I'm available. Perfect. Thank you so much, Tyrone. That was really helpful. And uh, we are going to open up for Q&A. So if anyone does have a question, whether it be on Clubhouse or social media, Facebook here, feel free to type it out or um, raise your hand. Um, and What's interesting is that a lot of business owners um, go into business, but they're not really clear on what businesses they are liable and also how they pay taxes as a business owner. Um, right. And so, uh, Tyrone, if you can close the share screen, it'd be great. Oh, and, oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. So <laughs> I want to just kind of add on to an, a, a very common question that we get, um, especially with taxes, right, is... Mm -hmm. um, I filed my personal taxes already. Now I need to file my business taxes and they have an LLC and they're the only member or mm -hmm. they have an LLC and it's multiple members and they have a partnership return um, or they're an S corporation, right? In all three of those scenarios, the income flows to your personal return. So sometimes there's a separation of taxes with the business that's usually only with a C corporation where it strictly files its own return and it really doesn't impact your personal return. Um, those other structures, they end up flowing to you as a because uh, it's a pass-through entity. So long story short, these taxes that Tyrone mentioned, some of them could be specific to the business only, but when it comes to income taxes, your business generally flows to your personal and then you pay taxes as a whole. And so, you know, when it comes to filing, number one, your taxes are driven by your books and records. So of course, that's 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 key. That's the number one goal: have your books mm -hmm. and records in, in order. You can maximize your deductions and you know properly prepare a tax return uh, when the books are in good shape. And then when it comes down to paying those taxes, whether it be FICA, you know, uh, self-employment taxes, or if there's a local business tax, you'll be prepared and you'll know how you're taxed. Um, if you're filing your taxes personally and not including the business, nine times out of 10, you've gone a step ahead. All right. So I just wanted to kind of clarify that. And, um, and definitely when it comes to those trust fund taxes, yeah, people's businesses can be wiped out. People's personal property, you know, can be um, confiscated or um, levied, you know, um, when those taxes are not paid over because the government looks at it like you're stealing money from them. You've collected mm -hmm. this money from the customer, whether it be sales tax or, payroll tax for employees, and now you're holding it and using it in your business instead of paying it over to us. So um, you're pretty much the middleman. 
one one thing I I I find in my in my business is people just aren't quite aware of how much tax and tax code affects their lives. And one of the things that they say, and they'll say that when you know trying to deal with um, negotiating with the IRS, I have to explain is one taxes pretty much and, and small business people don't quite understand because you know they a lot of times they don't pay the tax out of their paycheck you know it you know when you're working for somebody if you're used to work with somebody it comes straight out of your paycheck so you don't really think about taxes are number one it's the first thing that comes out of your even before you see your own money if you work for somebody the tax is coming out of your paycheck right mm -hmm. so the government is the number one creditor so they're not going to accept, oh, well, I had to spend money on this or I had to spend money on that because technically the money that you paid was pay, uh, or should have been paid is paid after your business expense. So it's very important to understand that those taxes should be paid first. And if you, and if you do fall behind and you have a situation where you can't pay them, pay them later. You know, because if you don't pay them, and you come back and you've got a large sum of money uh, that you owe and now you're going back to the irs or the state and saying hey i can't afford to pay it they're going to say to you well why can't you and you say well i've got a credit card i gotta pay or i've got this i gotta pay there's certain things they're not going to accept to say okay well we'll allow that certain things they're going to say well we're the number one creditor we've done an analysis we'll allow you to pay for this basic living expenses, but they're not going to allow you to just put them on the backside because once again, the government is the number one creditor. They're the only creditor that can go to your bank account or go to your uh, whoever pays you and demand money without going to court. Everybody else has to go to court. Wow. Simple as that. Good point. Very good point. And, you know, as a business owner, when you're just getting started, you know, a lot of people are um, building up cash flow and building up profitability. And so like they're taking everything that is made in the business and putting it back in the business, you know, or taking care of, you know, rent and things like that, which is understandable. Mm -hmm. But if you start the habit of putting aside 30 to 40 percent, at least of what you're making for taxes and then using that money that's left over, it's hard, but that's how you set yourself up for success and not getting behind. Because once you get in that cycle of being behind, it can be very challenging to catch back up. Um, Absolutely. And you're not going to always have the, you know, um, you're not going to always have the option to negotiate if your numbers on paper don't match, you know, what the IRS requires. So really, if you start the habit up front, you know, put those taxes to the side. When that, when you, if you sell a, a product or even a service, some services are taxable here in New York. Um, when you sell that product or service and that tax is collected from the customer, that sales tax, that deposit that you get from your merchant or that, you know, they give you cash for, that includes sales tax money. So that should mm -hmm. go in a separate account. You know, you should mm -hmm. really put that money in a separate Absolutely. account. So that is there. Same thing. Yeah, I, I, I was just thinking the same thing, uh, or I was about to, you know, mention that is I actually advise a lot of my uh, clients to open up a separate account for sales. It's hard for them to get understand that, and some of them do, some of them don't. But it, that's the safest way, in order to you know make sure that you just say that's not my money, that's not my money, that's that's the government money I'm putting in this account. So all you have to do is when you pay it, it just comes out of that account, and you have to worry it coming out of your cash flow. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, separate accounts are great, even for payroll, because as money starts, you know commingling, I guess you could say payroll money and operating, you know, business money. It's mm -hmm. great to have one account for payroll, one account for save for, um, sales tax, and then your operating account. Um, exactly. And then even the savings account, you know, for your personal, you know, tax liability. So, you know, all you have to know your numbers to really know uh, what you need to be putting aside. So that's why I, I strongly, strongly suggest bookkeeping. But, um, but once you do, once you are running your business, if these are things that you can't manage, you should really have a professional help you with it right from the beginning, not don't wait till your business gets to a certain amount too big, you know, gets, gets big enough, right from the beginning, you know, make sure you have in your budget, that professional help so that they can help you to put all these things aside and know what you need, what you actually have available in your business to spend. That's really important. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And, uh, and, you know, the other tax I could think of um, in terms of uh, 
different types, different types of taxes is estimated taxes. So it's not estimated taxes is really made up of income tax and self-employment tax. But what it is, is pretty much you paying taxes throughout the year. Like um, Tyrone said, when you're employed, the taxes are being taken out for you. You don't have to worry about it. When you're self-employed or a business owner, they're not. And so it's on it's on us um, business owners to pay in those taxes quarterly. That's what the IRS and most states require. If you're going to owe when you file, you may be hit with a penalty if you don't. So if you put that money aside every time you get paid or every time you get a client, when it's time to file quarterly, you'll have the money available to pay. You could do a projection with your professional to see how much you should pay in. And then by the time you file, you're not caught with this bill and with no money to pay. You know, So estimated taxes is really a prepayment of your income taxes and possibly your um, FICA contribution if you're self-employed. So that's important to, to know as a business owner that that is a tax that should be paid throughout the year. And in most cases is paid under your individual account. Um, certain states may have a city um, or state estimated tax for the business itself, but generally um, income tax estimates are coming from your personal account. All right. All right, so if anyone has a question, we will answer open Q&A right now. I um, wanna thank everyone who's been participating and listening in. This is going to be available later um, to review um, either on uh, my Facebook page, YouTube, also on the podcast. And so if there's no questions, final call, I wanna have, um, I'm going to close out. I'll have Tyrone just kind of share his contact information and uh, company name again. And then we'll be back next Friday at 12. So Tyrone, you can go ahead and close out. Oh, okay. All right. Um, so once again, uh, my name is Tyrone Taylor um, and I'm an enrolled agent and the name of my company is Nashville Tax Relief. Um, I'm based out of Nashville, Tennessee. Um, and um, I specialize once again in, in uh, individuals that have in small businesses that have tax issues. So I try to fix those issues. Um, and I work nationally, so it doesn't, it doesn't matter if you're simply, if you're in Nashville uh, or Tennessee or the South, I work with clients all over the country. Uh, my focus is to assist those that uh, want to get out of their situation. Uh, so um, if you ever have any questions, um, you can con contact me for uh, a uh, consultation, you can call me at 615-953-7124, or um, you can go to my website and set up a, a consultation. You can do it by Zoom, just like we're Zooming right now. Uh, I do a lot of Zoom consultations with people all over the country, so. Perfect, yeah. perfect. And we did get a question um, from okay. Gail, and she just said, would you recommend opening a savings account to save 30 to 35% for taxes or opening a completely different bank account? Um, it really, say the savings tax is, I mean, savings rates right now are so low and they've been so low for gener, uh, generations now. I mean, you're going to get 0.1%. I mean, it's it's up to you, but you do have to be aware of this. With savings accounts, you can't withdraw money out more than six times out of the month, or you'll face a penalty. So, I wouldn't put in a savings account because you, if you've got to pay money out regularly, just open up a saving a, a regular ch a checking account and put it in there, and you don't have to worry about the withdrawal withdrawal issue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, good point. And the savings, you know. Um, there are times when maybe when money's not accessible, it's easier not to touch. So mm -hmm. there could be cases where maybe for your estimated taxes, which is only four times a year, maybe you want to take out, you know, money from your business into your personal as a distribution and put it into a, a personal savings that you maybe can't access so easily. Like, for example, the online only type, you know, accounts, whatever the interest rate it is, what it is, but um, it's not something you can just run to the ATM and pull out. So well, well, hopefully we're uh, you're disciplined enough as a small business person <laughs> where you don't have to you have to say, OK, well, I can't pull it, pull it out. You know, that's why I'm putting it there. But the main the main I, the main reason why I'm saying savings, I don't even know why banks currently even offer savings accounts. I mean, they don't really the interest is so, so low. I mean, it's, I've seen point zero one percent. What's the point? That means if you put a million dollars in that account, you're going to get $10 per year or $100 per year on your $1 million. What's the point? Right. You know, you, so 
if you have a substantial amount of money out uh, that you're saving, I would look more towards uh, investing it versus putting it in any type of savings. Even money market account rates are fairly, I mean, you know, 1%. Right. Right. And so it's not really worth it. Uh, but yeah, if you've got a, I mean, the, the, the best thing to do is to put it into another check account, open up another checking account. If and I, you're separating yourself, you know, don't, don't have an ATM uh, card for that. Don't have any checks for it. You know, you just basically are, are doing maybe uh, uh, ACH transfers to pay your taxes. That's probably the best. That's your best bet. Sounds good. Sounds good. Perfect. And I get, you know, the question of um, what bank should I use or what banks are good? Honestly, just compare, you know, compare the different features and fees for the, mm -hmm. for the bank that you're looking to use. And also, I, you know, it is easier if you do have access between your personal and business account because you may need to infuse cash into your business or if you're profitable, you can take a distribution. So instead of running from one bank to the other, sometimes it is ideal mm -hmm. to have them at the same place, same bank. Yeah. Okay. Community, community banks usually provide the best service, you know, community um, and um, credit union banks. However, um, it kind of depends. You've got to, you know, just look and see uh, what type of, of services they're offering. If they offer free ATM withdrawals, you know, how many transactions, because unlike personal um, accounts, business accounts usually are based, uh, the fee is based upon how many transactions you're going to be doing, whether it's cash deposits or writing checks, things like that. So that's something you should be aware of. But yeah, community banks and usually community banks, if you're looking for lending, are a little bit easy to deal with as well. You know, um, as far as if that's an issue for you, if you want to grow your business after, you know, and look looking to borrow money to do so in the future. Mm. That's a good point. Yeah. And um, and the credit unions, you know, um, some of them are a little quirky when it comes to uh, integrations and bookkeeping and stuff like yes. that. But, but a lot of them have stepped up. They've technology is coming up. And even things like Zelle, um, you know, being able to make transfers, some of them, a lot more of them are offering that now. So I think across the board, they're now um, at a good place compared to, to, you know, these national banks. So definitely yeah. check those out. So we've got a question here from Clubhouse. All right. Again. Try that again. Technology. Okay. Hello? One second. Okay. All right. So first, there we go. There we go, Taylor. How you doing? Hey, good afternoon, Safi. Good afternoon. Now. <laughs> Safi, you too. Go ahead with your question. Back. Thanks a million. Uh, so I just wanted to show some love to the stage. Um, for that tidbit, I, particularly the part, and I know as basic it is to you guys, mm -hmm. it's not so much to us as business owners and entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. um, the portion about uh, opening the checking account, a separate checking account mm -hmm. for uh, payroll taxes and other taxes. Um, so I thought that was a nice piece right there, something I will immediately be implementing Thank you. and advising others to definitely consider um, so I appreciate that, uh, from both of you guys. You're welcome. And I might be reaching out to you guys separately on another note. So okay. I want to get up here and state that. Sounds Taylor good. Beckett and I am off. All right. Thank you All right. for sharing. Yep. Take it easy. Perfect. Okay. We got another question here. Okay. Got a little audience here. Yes. <laughs> Gail says, yes, yeah, savings accounts do suck. <laughs> um, what's considered a reasonable salary? What is considered a reasonable salary based on IRS guidelines? Okay, that's an excellent question. Um, some of you uh, who have, uh, that question is related to S corporations. Um, basically, when you are a owner, share, shareholder, manager of an S corporation, you have to pay yourself, and this is something that a lot of S corporation people, uh, owners of S corporations who manage them, which means you run it. You are not just an investor. You run the actual S corporation business. You're supposed to pay yourself a wage. You're supposed to be a W-2 wage earner, just like your employees. 
and you have to pay yourself a, um, a comp compensation based upon the type of job or as a manager or, or employee of that business. It's a, uh, a specific amount and there's no set amount. Um, it depends upon the type of uh, responsibilities and the job title you have. For example, um, me personally, as an enrolled agent, um, I have to look and see what other enrolled agents are paid. And there's different, um, there's different ways of, of finding that out. You can use, some people use salary.com. They say, okay, well, I look and see what enrolled agents are. Okay, this is how much enrolled agents. So that's gonna be the salary that I pay myself. And the government, um, so that's one way you can look. And there are companies that exist to do an analysis to so say you can't find information you can hire a company to uh do the analysis to make the determination how much you're actually supposed to pay yourself um for that type of compensation um the reason why uh, this is kind of an important issue for s corporation shareholder um managers is you can actually be uh well audited and the government can say, well, you only paid yourself a specific amount of money, but you were supposed to pay yourself more. You only did that to avoid paying self-employment tax. So there are cases where, for example, an attorney said, oh, well, I only, I'm, I'm paying myself $25,000 as a wage. And uh, they're, they're doing a dividend for half a million dollars, which means they don't have to pay self-employment tax on the half a million mm -hmm. as a distribution, excuse me, not dividend, distribution from the S corporation. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, that's, that's tax avoidance. Um, our, and so the government uh, went, they, they sued them and the per, they went to court and tax court ruled that no, you were supposed to pay yourself as a lawyer, not somebody who makes $25,000 per year. So that's, that's the, so to answer, to, that's the long answer to your question, but the short answer is, there's there's different uh it depends upon the type of job you're actually doing um and you know uh and there are resources out there you can use i mean a lot of people do use salary.com they just uh do a comparison of what they're doing now and they use that website <clears throat> to uh determine how much to pay themselves in perfect thank you and the irs definitely is going to be um, cracking down more on that reasonable compensation for S corporations mm -hmm. because it's so um, misused. Um, mm -hmm. And also you wanna consider the area you live in because the um, salary for a CPA in New York may be different than Alabama, for example, you know, cost of living. Or Tennessee. Yeah. Or Tennessee, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Although we're catching up. Nashville is not, it's, 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 it's not what it used to be, boy. 10 years ago, it was cheap. Now all these companies are moving here, so. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. But yeah. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, that, geographic yeah, yeah, regional, yeah, regional area would definitely make it. There, there's different things, education, <laughs> uh, length and term of, of you being in the job, all those things. But yeah, mm -hmm. the main thing is you do have to make sure that you're not paying yourself at least severely under what would be standard. Yeah. Exactly. And the IRS, what they do is they'll come in and look at what you've taken as distributions and they will reclass that as salaries and charge you late penalties and interest on the payroll taxes that should have been paid on that money. So that's the downfall of not doing it up front, you know, correctly with that reasonable comp. Um, <laughs> Gail says her husband is a huge Titans fan. <laughs> I don't know. What oh, I'm not. Is, but... I, I'm, I'm not. I'm a huge 49er fan being from San Francisco. So. OK, <laughs> perfect. All right. So I think that is the last question. So thanks. Thanks for participating here. Um, it, you know, this was definitely helpful. Tyrone, I want to thank you for, you know, guest speaking today. And um, just, no to problem, close out, just to close out uh, for myself. So Safia to Russell, I'll go by Safi for short. And um, SDR Consulting Inc. is a company I'm CEO and founder of. We work with mostly small business owners, helping them from business formation all the way through to tax preparation and all that fun stuff in between. We also do some tax resolution work for those who do get into trouble with the IRS or state. And I uh, have a virtual practice and so work with clients all over. Um, you can find us online at SDR Consulting. That's S as in Sam, D as in David, R as in Robert. And uh, phone number 516-255-6603. So um, everyone have a happy Friday. Thanks again, Tyrone, and everyone stay safe. We'll be back next week.
Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.